A powerful storm system will be impacting the United States over the next few days with significant severe weather making a return, including the risk of damaging winds, very large hail, and a few tornadoes. Additionally, major flooding continues in central Texas today, where over 50 fatalities have been confirmed over the last 48 hours, as catastrophic flooding will continue today. Lastly, tropical storm Chantel has made landfall back over in South Carolina, and this will likely bring significant flooding in addition to tornadoes today in the Carolinas. So in today's forecast, we are going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States over the next seven days. And we'll begin with what's happening across the country today, beginning with the East Coast, which right here is Tropical Storm Chantel, which has made landfall in South Carolina this morning as a relatively strong tropical storm. It actually nearly got to a hurricane. It has now made landfall. It is expected to bring more flooding rainfall and a few tornadoes throughout the next few hours as it continues to meander off to the north. It would have been a much stronger storm if it wasn't for all the wind shear in this area. We actually would have easily seen a hurricane if it wasn't for the wind shear. So luckily there was a lot of wind shear in place. Otherwise this could have been a much more significant event. Back over in the Great Plains we've had some scattered showers and thunderstorms over the last 12 hours including around a severe weather that brought damaging winds and hail from Montana all the way back down into Texas. And we are anticipating another round of severe weather today and tomorrow could be the mo most significant severe weather day that we've had in quite some time here in areas like the Central Plains, so that'll definitely be something to keep an eye on, and unfortunately, there is still a lot of moisture right now in Texas today, which will lead to even more showers and thunderstorms, and the flooding risk is expected to continue today across Texas. And expanding further on our major flooding threat that took place in Texas, at least 50 fatalities have been confirmed in Central Texas from the devastating flooding over the last 48 hours, and on top of that, at least 14 of those people were children, and this has been a catastrophic event here over the last couple of days and again notice how much rain has fallen this is just over the last 72 hours we've had many areas between 8 to 20 inches of rainfall the highest rainfall accumulation number so far was near Streeter Texas at 20 inches of rainfall and again a lot of that fell only within a short amount of time within 6 to 10 hours so really crazy stuff there flood watches are still in effect in central Texas just to the southwest of DFW back over near San Antonio and Austin and just to the south of Abilene where more heavy rainfall could lead to flooding today. This is what it looks like throughout the late morning and early afternoon. We are expecting scattered to numerous showers and thunderstorms from Dallas, Fort Worth, all the way back over into central Texas, where heavy rainfall could lead to even more flooding. And this is exactly what we do not need in Texas at this point. So unfortunately, this major flooding event is expected to continue today. And tomorrow, we are expecting even more rainfall back over in central Texas. The HRRR model is indicating that we'll likely see a widespread area still pick up another one to four inches of rain. There will be localized spots that pick up as much as 8 to 10 inches of rain today between Dallas and Fort Worth all the way back over just to the north of San Antonio. So be ready and turn around. Don't drown on the roadways. Now let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next several days, beginning with today, which is Sunday, and we have a level 2 out of 5 slight risk of severe weather in place for Colorado, Wyoming, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Nebraska, and the marginal threat goes all the way back into New Mexico and as well as Texas. We also have three other marginal threats of severe weather where isolated severe weather will be a possibility today. The biggest concern in our central plains risk will be damaging winds, which could be significant at times. May see damaging winds as high as 80 to 90 miles per hour this afternoon. Large to very large hail is also a big concern back over in the sand hills in western Nebraska and northeastern Colorado. There's also a chance for a few tornadoes today. We're keeping an eye on the Carolinas for a tornado or two during the morning and early afternoon and another low tornado risk back over in the central plains. There is a chance of a live stream today, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified if and when we do go live. And then on Monday, the threat of severe weather will be more significant in the Central Plains where we now have a level 3 out of 5 enhanced risk of severe weather in northeastern Colorado, central western Nebraska, southern South Dakota, and northwest Kansas, and then the slight and marginal threats that go all the way through Minnesota and in the Texas Panhandle. We are expecting all hazards of severe weather on Monday including a significant risk of damaging winds which could be numerous to even widespread at times, especially across the sand hills of Nebraska. Large to very large hail is also a possibility. Could see hailstone sizes as large as the size of apples in central South Dakota, all the way back into northeastern Colorado. And there's also a chance for a few tornadoes. We actually have a 5% tornado risk in place in Nebraska. It's been quite a while since we've had a 5% tornado risk, the last time being June 28th. I do think a live stream is likely tomorrow, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified when we do go live. And then on Tuesday, the risk of severe 
weather will continue in the central plains where isolated to widely scattered severe storms with hail and wind will be a possibility and a low tornado risk. We're also keeping an eye on the east coast for isolated severe weather as well. And then by Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, I think our severe weather is really going to start to dominate across the northern plains, the Midwest, and the Ohio Valley, especially on Friday and Saturday. We're watching for the potential for maybe a big event or two back over in the Midwest and the Ohio Valley, and we'll talk more about that here in just a few minutes. Now, here's the timing of severe weather beginning with today, which we are expecting a bunch of severe storms later this afternoon. By around 4 to 5 o'clock, a lot of storms will fire off across northeast Colorado and western Nebraska. Biggest concern with these storms will be downburst damaging winds and large hail. If we manage to have any discrete supercells pop off out in front of that line, we may see a tornado or two, but generally speaking, I think damaging winds will be the dominant concern. And then by late this evening into the overnight hours, this will continue as a isolated damaging wind threat as it goes towards Omaha and also into very far northwestern Oklahoma. Now, I think Monday is going to be the bigger day of severe weather. I do anticipate there to be a bit more of a significant risk of severe weather that takes place, mainly across northeast Colorado and western Nebraska, where once again, a line of storms will form with a threat of significant to potentially widespread damaging winds. But if we do end up seeing any little discrete supercells, there will be a chance for an isolated tornado or two, which even a strong tornado cannot be ruled out in this environment. So this will be something we are keeping an eye on on Monday. And then beyond Monday, we are expecting a couple of mesoscale severe weather days, including Tuesday and Wednesday. But by Thursday and Friday, a large trough is likely going to eject right over Montana and also into North Dakota. And this could be our next big significant severe weather maker. There's a lot of question marks with this storm system as of right now, exactly where it'll be, how intense it'll be. But at least in the mid-level flow, it looks to be pretty intense. And it looks like a very classic looking trough, especially even for July. You don't usually see something this strong this far to the north. So this is something we need to keep a very close eye on especially for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. This is what the future radar looks like for the next several days. So Tropical Storm Chantel will continue to move into Virginia and North Carolina throughout the daytime today, leading to flooding rainfall and a low risk of isolated tornadoes. On Monday and Tuesday, we are expecting the continuation of severe weather in the Great Plains. And then on Tuesday, a few more severe storms are possible across the Midwest and maybe a little bit of storm activity along the East Coast. And then as we go into Wednesday and Thursday, I think Wednesday, Thursday are quieter days in general, at least across most of the lower. 48. We may see a little bit of severe weather on Thursday, depending on when that trough ejects, but we may see even a potential for significant severe weather, depending on the timing of that low pressure system. Anywhere from really Nebraska and Kansas, all the way back up into North Dakota on Thursday. By Friday, that storm system moves further to the north and east. We may see a severe weather threat take place across the Midwest on Friday, but again, there are a lot of question marks regarding the evolution of this low pressure system. And then on Saturday, more severe weather does appear possible across the Ohio Valley out of that same system. And then eventually by Sunday and Monday, the severe weather potential gets a lot more uncertain, but we'll likely continue to see a pretty active weather pattern when it comes to severe weather, even into the middle of July. And here's a look at Tropical Storm Chantel has made landfall this morning back over in South Carolina. This storm did make a run at becoming a hurricane. It really intensified right before landfall, but it has been weakening and it will continue to weaken as it moves to the north and eventually going towards North Carolina later today. But we are expecting the potential for some major major flooding potential and on top of that there is a chance for a few tornadoes so as this tropical storm continues to make its way inland there is a potential for major flooding today I do not think this is going to be a widespread event but notice how the HRRR model is painting a picture here where we could see a widespread area basically around Raleigh North Carolina even back towards the coastline picking up as much as two to eight inches of rain today we may have some localized spots as high as even 10 to 11 inches of rain throughout the daytime today and also into early tomorrow so definitely be ready for the potential of flooding, especially across central and eastern North Carolina, and also across very far eastern South Carolina throughout the day today. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. Looks like we're going to have videos basically every day here for the next week or so. We are expecting an active weather pattern to really continue all the way through the middle of July, maybe even further than that. So stay tuned. Make sure you click the bell icon so you're notified with the latest updates. Once again, a live stream is possible both today and tomorrow, so definitely stay tuned, and we'll see you guys all again in the next video or live stream.